Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video, and we are back at Silverstone with Iconic Auctioneers. Now, that is a new name of Silverstone Auctions, Iconic Auctioneers, it says it on there. There is a reason behind the name change. I'm not gonna explain it now, but there is a video on YouTube explaining all, and that will appear in the banner up there. But this sale is rammed, 204 cars in all in this bumper catalog. So poor old Tom who has to do the editing is quaking as usual. There's 53 competition cars, and there's quite a number of cars come from direct from the McRae family, Colin McRae's cars included in this sale. I'm looking at, well, I can see the legacy be, uh, below me and his first rally car, which is the Sunbeam just down there as well. There's Automobilia here, which has just been set up up here. We've just noticed there's amazing uh, race um, overalls with McRae written in pen in it, uber cool. Uh, but, and this is setup day, so this is Wednesday. Thursday is the first viewing day, Friday is the first auction day. Yeah, be aware of the auction days because they're changed from their normal format. Friday, 25th of August, is starts with the competition cars, one o'clock, and that will be followed by the automobilia. Normally the sale is over two days of all the road cars. This year it's just on the Saturday. So Saturday, 26th of August, 11 a.m. is when all these cars are going to be sold. It's going to be a monster sale. As I say, there's about 150 road cars in it. And I'm going to mention what lot number one, which I couldn't, sorry, well, it's lot number 600 in the catalogue, but the first one of the cars, Lord of the Manor of Silverstone title. I've never seen, if you want to be Lord Silverstone, this is your chance. They're actually selling off um, Lord of the Manor of Silverstone and it's estimate at 80 to 120,000 pounds. I did not expect that to see that in the catalogue. Anyway, we're going to dive down there, excuse all the noise and all the um, commotion going on in the background because there's a lot of cars coming in, but I've just got a kickstart with some of the cars down that line there. Just before we get going on the main line of cars down there, I wanted to show you these two because, yeah, Austin yeah. Mini Cooper, Mark II, 1000 cc Cooper, utterly original. I can't get how many miles, 21,000 miles from new and owned for 42 years by Vanessa and Graham Clutterbuck. And that's the connection with Paddington because they actually did the TV um, producers for Paddington Bear and the Wombles. But I love original cars. I keep looking at the Mini and wondering whether I would ought to add one to my collection. There's something very British, very iconic, and that looks super tidy. And that's 1968. Meanwhile, in Italy, they are obviously as obsessed with the Fiat 500 and Abarth were making them go particularly quick. Relatively speaking, I have to say, but a 595 SS Fiat Abarth here, this is 1967. Now, this is actually a replica, but lots are. There is an original one in the sale, I think, further down the line. But this is guided at 14 to 18,000 pounds and the Mini at 25 to 30,000 pounds. But just two, if you were growing up in the 60s, these hero little cars were quite a thing. I must show you the engine on the Fiat because we've got, I've got a Fiat 500. And what people don't realise is they don't, they, they vibrate quite a lot. And the way that Fiat got round it was basically to mount it on springs. And if I get hold of that, it sort of, jumps around in there to stop the vibration coming into the car. Anyway, there's a Lister 7 litre, which is another hero car, more of the 90s, I want to show you next. Well, if you read performance car in the 90s, this was a proper hero car, a Lister Le Mans 7 litre supercharged. Not only that, it's the convertible version as well. Now, I was actually lucky enough to drive a 7 litre Le Mans Lister the other day, and it's quite a thing. It's supercharged. It's got belt-driven superchargers on it, and it, it's just, gr there's so much grunt from this seven liter. It's a lot diff. They've got enormous tires. I think they almost share them with the Countach. These huge, great rims. Yeah, what are they? 335 section rear tires. They always seem to have this magnolia interior as well. And it is such a statement of 90s um, you know, excess. Now, they didn't make that many of these cars, and they're one of those, it's guided at 80 to 90,000 pounds, 600 horsepower. Even as mobile sculpture, they're quite something. 
Tom Lempful, who did my Jaguar Coupe, looks after quite a number of these. He says the only thing you've got to watch on it, if you're out in very hot climbs, they don't have the best cooling because they basically shrunk the amount of air they can suck into the engine. If British climbs, particularly this winter, it's not an issue. And with modern aluminium radiators, that really helps. But it looks fantastic. And that when they come up for sale, there's normally a gaggle to buy them. And I quite understand it. That's lot 625. Another one I just want to mention here, this is an Alpha Julia GTC, very rare. This is one of 54 99 UK supplied. Everybody thinks of the Alpha Spider if you want a convertible, which is just down there. But this one was a convertible version of the um, Julia. This is a 1600 one. And it's been restored, looks very smart and guided at 55 to 65,000 pounds. I mention it because it's a very rare car. Be very interested to see what that makes. Another car I wanted to mention. This one, Porsche 914. Now, I th this is the four-liter, uh, sorry, the four-cylinder, two-liter version. There is a six, but they're pretty rare in this country. Left-hand drive all of them. I just like these. I think they're very good value. They rem look remarkably modern. This is 1973, and they're sitting at 25 to 30,000 pounds. They're the, they're the original Boxster. I'm not quite sure why well, they haven't actually started to get a bit of a following, but looks very smart. Uh, lot 730 on that one, and they have a removable roof as well. Two giant bits of Americana. <laughs> this is 2016, yeah. F Ford Mustang, Shelby S Super Snake. I mean, the crazy things anyway, Mustangs, but this one, yeah, 800 horsepower from this one. Lord knows what this one's going to be like. Two wheel drive, I've not driven one as wild as this. I've driven some reasonably high horsepower ones, and everything's sort of super sized. What's interesting in this one is it's right hand drive because by then they were actually doing right hand drive Mustangs, and it's quite tempting at 75 to 85,000 pounds. I've not seen one before, perhaps I ought to book one in. One car I have driven quite a lot though is this one, and this is the um, 2000 Dodge Viper GTS in very good colours. I think this grey and this stripe really suits it. Huge thing, V10. I drove one of these with Justin Bell over to uh, Le Mans, and it was a very good GT car, way better than I expected it to be. They are an Aquate, so your left hand drive, you've got this great big car but they drive better than expected. And you've got to remember that V10 was actually all aluminium and they handle it better than you might expect, but there's no traction controls, no nothing. It's all down to you. And in the wet, well, it's a bit of a handful, I'm sure, but it's guided at 55 to 65,000 pounds. Now we just saw that GTC Alpha. I wanted to show you this one though, is Alfa Romeo, two litre Spider. Now, 1975, looks very tidy to me. I had that Duetta Alpha and the surprise to me was how stiff the structure was. There was no rattles in it. It looked, felt much better than I expected. And I, mine was quite expensive because it was Duetto, which is that boat tail one. These seem very good value to me. So, like I say, 1975 and guided at 20 to 25,000 pounds. This is actually the optional factory hardtop. Not seen one before on it. It has a bigger window by doing that, but obviously the soft top is underneath. But I think that's pretty good by that one. It looks very smart on its GTA wheels, Alpha Holix wheels on it. God, there's so much to choose from. Uh, Mexico, I, I think I'm, I ought to feature this. There's a number of Nissan 240Zs in this sale. Again, if you grew up in the 70s, this Samari, this, this modified version was the one to have with the um, matte bonnet. Uh, 16, 177, fabulous, um, rare opportunity to own one of these famous Z cars. 1973, I can't get over because it looks more modern than that. Most of them are American, but this is a right-hand drive one as well and guided at 52 to 60,000 pounds. The standard versions are about half that price and I think there's a couple of them in this sale as well. Where do we go next? Well, Evo 6, can't help but feature this one. This, in the early days of Evo magazine, we have never, I had a, a rule that we'd never put a, a Mitsubishi Evo on the cover because we have been seen as a Japanese tuning uh, magazine, but that is definitely what we weren't. But to drive, these were wild things. They were somehow more adjustable than the Subaru. There, there was this deadly rival between the two. This is a RS Sprint number one of 12, so dated as, say, 2000. 
they were knocking the door with 300 horsepower these and just looks terrific this one it used to come from rally art hence i love the little red mud flaps on it that was very distinctive and guided at 50 to 60 thousand pounds always think about the tommy mackinan editions and that sort of thing but to drive very special car now a lot of people consider that the ferrari 456 is the one to have the four-seater ferrari I think these are well worth a look, the 612 Scaglietti. And in particular, this one, because this is also manual transmission. And it was pretty rare with a 612 to see a manual there. I have driven one of these at the factory. It has super balance. And if you could ever find one of uh, the one-to-one -one which had the glass roof when he really found a very special car. But if you're considering a 456, which are getting on in money now, 40, 50,000 pounds, I think the 612 has less issues. Uh, 456 suffers from a little bit from window seals and just annoying features on it. 612 basically just work and haven't had normally a hard life. And in manual transmission, they're a proper driver's car. And this one is guided at 80 to 100,000 pounds. Now there's a lot of heavy metal here. You often see a convertible interceptor. There we are, 1974, guided at 60 to 70 thousand pounds, just been restored. Two big Bentleys here as well. Ah, big four-seater, four-door uh, one. That one, that one has a giant sunroof on it. What I actually want to show you is this Pagoda. I know lots of people like the Mercedes Pagoda. It is a beautiful shape. I have the later one, and really, it's neat. This is the one I, I absolutely love. The shape of this. They're not great to drive. They have a bit of a peculiar. Uh, uh, automatic gearbox on them and they're quite old really I don't know what's this one dated 1969 oh this is one of the later ones but I'm picking this one out because it's lived in Portugal and it actually has the manual gearbox and it transforms these cars if you actually enjoy driving these aren't too bad uh, has don't think it's been restored but it's a lovely color this sort of green metallic and the sort of tan interior and once they're restored, they're crazy money, these, but this looks pretty tight to me, or have the hard top with it as well, and an interesting colour, and it is guided at 50 to 60,000 pounds, which seems reasonable value to me. Another Mini Cooper, this time 970S, that's a rare one, uh, so it's guided up slightly more, 34 to 38,000. I really like this Mini Pickup just never see these more and it has the town and country tires on it i notice says it's done 6365 miles and you on off from a private collection immaculately restored i'm not sure if that's original mileage on it but uh 25 to 35 thousand pounds for that uh just mention this pagoda i i was making a fuss of that one being a manual well there's another manual pagoda here also a 280 sl silver 83,000 miles guide at slightly more 65 to 75,000 pounds but i really wanted to show you this look at this fiat 500 abarth now 595 ss although this has been converted to 695 ss so a bigger engine conversion this is a, a very early car because this is, has the rear hinge doors on it which you got on the very first 500s little things i've not seen on one of these before is they've, the soft top has become a hard top. They've actually replaced the normal standard soft top with this top, like which I've not seen. Uh, red interior looks utterly immaculate, lovely badging, and guided at 30 to 35,000 pounds. And then finally, <laughs> this one. I have never seen one of these, but this is a 1970 Francis Lombardi Grand Prix. Basically, underneath is a Fiat 850 good friend from uh, Agricultural College had a uh, Fiat 850. We used to go out in it regularly. It's a rear engine. He told it it's a, like a 911. It wasn't really. You have to absolutely rev it. It was water-cooled uh, four-cylinder engine in the back. Didn't look as smart as this one, but this one is only guided at 20 to 25,000 uh, pounds. Love the pop-up lights on it as well. Go find another. I love the Fiat badge on it as well. Anyway, must stay away. Let's go to the other hall. You don't often see a Porsche Turbo looking like this, but look at this one, 1983 Porsche Turbo, and has not been used, as you could probably guess, since 2010. Guy bought it in 2007, and then had a fuel pump issue, put it in his garage, and never touched it again. Uh, they've, they've just come in here, obviously it's not been started, doesn't work, etc. It's 24,000 miles from you. 
Uh, it is a little tired. You can see a fair bit of rust just appearing on these wings here. Even the alloy bit there is slightly bubbling. The, there's rust on here, unfortunately. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. But it is all complete. That mileage is quite attractive and it is guided at 40 to 50,000 pounds, which is basically half price for one of those. Or something completely different. Look at this thing, 30 to 40,000 pounds for that car. Or this car I find very interesting. So this is an MGA, 1957 MGA Roadster. What's and it's basically made for rallying, doing historic rallies, that sort of thing. So all the timing gear, etc., is in it, and it is guided at twenty to thirty thousand pounds. And it looks to be absolutely on the button. It's on all sorts of things, but critically, did the Millimilia in 2021. And if you wanted an entry to the Millimilia, a car that you could do the Millimilia in, here you go for about twenty twenty five thousand pounds. It's actually about 17,000 to enter Millimilia now, uh, it's 2,000 kilometres, but it does give it prominence. It's got the seal on it, it's definitely done it, and I think that's a very good way to do the Millimilia. You do not have to go crazy expensive. There is a £25,000 MGA that would get you into the Millimilia. Now, as I said earlier, there's 53 competition cars here, and they're mainly in this line here. All sorts of cars, 1979 rally car, Bjorn Waldegard did that car, did the RAC. I think I remember seeing it there. Or you're going to have a, a Dutch touring car here with Penthouse uh, sponsorship on it, or Cosworths. There are quite a number of these Cosworths in various forms. Corvette, but this is quite an interesting car, this Nissan GTR. Now this came from the GT Academy, this was in the early noughties where there was this idea of people on Gran Turismo, the game, how good were they in a real car? And this was a the car they sort of used from it, a guy who won it, he ended up at Le Mans as well, and they've just done a film on it. I think it's out this weekend, but this is the car that he raced at Le Mans and is in the film. So quite a rare car, but also guided at quite a high price, 225 to 275,000 pounds. But then they've got these three cars here from Colin McRae. This is actually from Colin McRae family. This is a, this original Sunbeam was the car he started rallying in. This, he entered uh, the first rally in this car, 1977, uh, guided at 80 to 100,000 pounds. And this has actually been in the family, beautifully stored, beautifully prepared. I'm sure there's going to be huge interest in that. Or his legacy, now ProDrive car, um, this is where he got together, I think, with Nicky Griss. Is this with, oh, Derek Ringer was his co-driver in this car. And it's famous because he got six wins out of six in 1992. So Group A, ex Conor McRae car, huge interest in this car. Such an iconic rally car and guided at 380 to 450,000 pounds. Very valuable car. And then this was sort of the last passion project of Con McRae before he died. He wanted to go back to the Escort Mark II and had the ultimate rally marked Escort Mark II built. And this is the very car. So 330 horsepower from a 2.5 litre engine in this. Unbelievable prep on this car. Sale direct from the family, 125 to 150,000 pounds for the ultimate Mark II rally Escort. We've come outside because they're still putting cars in hall number two and this is all the cars waiting to go in and to save time we've come out and see what is out here. I'm not actually going to feature this but there's Ford's um, Sapphire two-wheel drive here. I think it's a long ownership, not exactly sure what lot number but if you're after one it's a good one, it's got leather interior. I've actually come out and going to kick off with this TVR Chimera. Now Chimeras and TVRs of this era were everywhere and that's a bit of a downside because we all used them and we all had issues and we all wanted the bigger engine upgrade, etc. I was told off when I owned my Griff 500, where I went wrong was having the modified engine by the Griff 500 opened out to five litre. If you want a super reliable TVR, you buy the stock engine Rover one. And this is a four litre Chimera. That means it has the 3.9 litre uh, Rover engine in it, created from Land Rover, and basically is bulletproof because TVR never touched it. And it's 4,200 miles from new, this one, 20 year ownership. It's a near new Chimera. It is guided at 25 to 30,000 pounds, but I suggest that if you wanted a Chimera, that would be a good one to look at. 
or if you want a, a Lotus Esprit, and I don't blame you, I love this S3. So this isn't the turbo version of uh, Lotus Esprit. You can tell that because it hasn't got the louvered back window. It's got this all glass window at the back, um, sort of magnolia lever inside. So this 2.2 normally aspirated uh, Lotus Esprit, 91,000 miles, 24,000 pounds guide on it. Yeah, I'm going to rattle through. This is the trouble of having so many cars to feature, but I have to feature this one. Look at this little Julia Sprint GTA. Now, this is the ultimate version of this. This was a competition car made as light as they could make them, 1600, I think, in period. And you can tell a GTA by it, its rivets here, a, a dead giveaway. But this is actually a replica GTA done in Italy many moons ago. I can't remember if they're all right-hand drive or left-hand drive. There was a thing about right-hand drive cars on the continent being quicker on track. Not sure if this was always right-hand drive where it's being converted. But I can look underneath and it's all GTA suspension. You can see the holes in the suspension arms and that th sort of thing. And these are very expensive Alphas these days. The GTA is well over a quarter of a million pounds. You can tell it's a step nose, so it's the early one. 1965 GTA replica, done Tour de Corsa, done Tour Auto. It's got up to date FI papers, uh, K appendix, and guided at 80 to 100,000 pounds. So basically less than half price of a proper GTA. There's always some surprise at this sale. Oh, look at this one, Alfa Romeo A12 Transporter. So this is for transporting your race car, 1969, and actually guided, which seems really reasonable, at 25 to 30,000 pounds. How cool is that? But if you're after a two-door Subaru, well, there's quite a number in this sale. This one is, a, is an unusual car, because this is actually a 1997 Subaru Impreza WRX STI Type R, one of only 20 homologation cars built by ProDrive for the 97 WRC. Basically, it was a recce car and incredibly rare, this one. I know the owner of this, he's used it and he's enjoyed it, but it's time to move on. He's got some other, he's got a Subaru Legacy and things in the garage and it's guided at 40 to 50,000 pounds or there's a uh, Subaru P1, so a regular road car, again, with ProDrive connections, they, they modify this one, it's less than 50,000 miles, it says in this same, 27 stamps in the dealer net, but also at 40 to 50,000 pounds. Unfortunately, the Ultimate 22B, it hasn't arrived yet, because Colin McRae's 22B is also in this sale. It's guided an awful lot of money, it's near half a million pounds, but it is number 000 of the run of 400 cars, but it hasn't arrived yet. But there's one more Subaru actually, just worth a look at, one that was always very sought after, and that was the RB5. Now this is it, this is the RB5, and it, and it looks fairly normal from the outside in Prezzo, but there was just something about this car that was just right all the way through. It was incremental improvements all the way through it, and it was a particular favourite Evo. I see that the catalogue actually quotes this, the RB5 is truly outstanding, every ingredient perfectly in balance with the next, power to grip, weight to damping force. So yeah, we really liked it when it came out, and it's rare to see one like this, so this is only 41,000 miles from new, 99, uh, Impreza RB5 guided at 40 to 50,000 pounds. So it wasn't just Evo who thought they were really good. A lot of other people do, hence the value. Anyway, it's hot out here. Let's go inside and see what's happened in Hall 2. Now, if you're around in the 80s, you know about the professional, these guys. I'm not sure I should be standing here with these two guns pointing at me, but there's these two Capris. Brodie and Doyle, the professionals, a very famous programme from the 80s, and these cars starved. They're always out of shape, lots of dust, lots of craziness, jumping around. Um, and now they're up for auction. Now they're up for auction as a pair. They're both a three litre S Capris, look perfect. They've got one's got the Recaro with the fishnet uh, headrest on it. That, that was the option I noticed. This one hasn't, so that's definitely the quicker of the two, the three litre S. Capri and they are guided with this sort of provenance and history at 200 to 230,000 pounds the pair. Special cars, other ones I want to show you here. Oh, well, this is quite nice actually. This is a Senna uh, McLaren uh, MP48F1. So, this is a display car of when 
Ayrton Senna was driving from, hence the Ayrton Senna there, the boss, the logos, the Marlboro when cigarette advertisement was allowed, and such a beautiful F1 car. It also comes with full-size Senna helmet, replica helmet with it, and if you want this in your garage, well, it's not that badly priced. 60 to 70,000 pounds looks absolutely perfect to me. Oh, there's so much to feature. I thought this one caught my eye. I don't understand. This is a, a Porsche of Boston 2015. This is the Spider. So this is a limited run car and with the basically a trick engine in it and with this special manual roof. And I t they are beautiful handling cars. They always are boxed but this adds a lot of little layer of spice to it. But they don't seem to be going crazy money and I just think it's a very usable special car to have in the garage at 70 to 80 thousand pounds it's seven and a half thousand miles from new one day I think we'll look back at spider prices being that and think god are they really that cheap these aren't quite so cheap this is I just wanted to feature this 993 turbo obviously I had one and the the num the trick you look for in the spec of a 993 turbo, it had the X50 pack, because that meant it had slightly bigger turbos and intercooler and produced 430 horsepower instead of 400 horsepower. So, and this one has it uh, 46,000 miles from new, and it also has the, the bigger spoiler. This is from the GT2, and this air scoop that came later on the S version, the Turbo S, uh, guided at 130 to 150,000 pounds. It's very low mileage, five Ferrari 550 down there as well. Uh, 456 manual, but yeah, it's a very interesting row of cars just down here. RS200, this one, 6,000 miles from new, one owner car, looks absolutely perfect, 240 to 280,000 pounds. I'm not going to go into full detail on it because I featured one in the last video, but I've never seen one as clean as that, nor have I ever seen a full Escort RS Cosworth Motorsport Group N rally car like this one. 703 miles from new, basically locked away, has been around the world, created basically untouched rally car. Uh, Johnny Smith did a, a video on this late break show if you want to see that, if you want to know more detail about that, but a real collector piece, just absolutely perfect as it left. But I didn't realise it was here. Here it is, the 22B of Colin McRae's. Um, he, there was three prototypes made and Colin got one of them and what's really special about this is the number on the dash is 000 dash of 400. Colin McRae's from his private collection along with the other cars here. This all go nuts. 22Bs are worth a lot of money. Colin McRae's prototype 22B is the top of the list. Utterly perfect in here. And as I said outside, guided at 400 to 500,000 pounds. Slightly more affordable, this Integrale in this pearlescent white, which was well sought after when we actually, it came out. It's 94, it's an Evo 2. And yeah, a lot of money, but 90 to 100,000 pounds for this. It's got the sort of blue leather interior, really nice. Just one more car, um, M3, E30 M3, uh, 1989. What's special about this one is Snitzer, when it was new, in, this was a German car, went to AC Snitzer and they put in their 2.5 litre engine, basically before the Evo 2 came out with a 2.5 engine. This has it and I think in red it looks terrific. Um, guided at 70 to 80,000 pounds, which is basically what they're worth with the regular ones, but this has the enhancements of the Snitzer engine in it. Um, so yeah, a special car. I can't, uh, there's more cars here than any other sale, but I hope you enjoy this sort of tour around. This is the star lot probably of this Silverstone uh, auction sale, and it is the one of seven competition cars that Jaguar bought out in 1961. And it was Sir William Lyons wanted the place, the E-Type, to make sure it was known as a true racer. So he gave out these seven cars or made them available to race teams. And this, along with the six other cars, went and did extremely well on the various circuits. They were mildly tweaked engines. I was reading it, polished heads, bigger valves, um, polished internals and that sort of thing. And Jack Sears raced this car as well. They are uber collectible now these original cars and very few if any of the seven are in the condition that this one is in so it reads if it's worth 59,000 miles from new and guided at one per 1.25 million pounds for this e-type 
So yeah, that's the sale. Now this is the Silverstone Festival is happening this weekend at Silverstone. It was 75, celebrating 75 years of motorsport at this venue, so since 1948. And it's a big party it's turning into. It used to be known as Silverstone Classic, but now the Silverstone Festival, and they have bands overnight. They've got all the clubs outside, every type of car is here represented by the clubs. There's lots of events. There's also 10 hours of racing on track every day over this coming weekend. And I, I was just being told, if you go to the iconic auctioneers website, then there is a discount code. You get 10% off for tickets if you want to come here as a family or whatever. But there you go. That's the sale details as well. All my pick of cars here. If you want to know more details on cars, and it's well worth seeing the history of this E-Type, then go to the iconic auctioneers website all the details are there that's where you register to bid and uh, uh, good luck if you're after any of the cars i featured here so, and i'm sorry i can't actually do a video at the end of the sale to tell you what the values are but all the values are put up normally we're in a few hours of the end of the sale so if you want to know what things sell for then again check the iconic auctioneers website that's the end of this video hope you enjoyed if you did well keep watching keep subscribing more videos coming along very soon